Hi, I'm Melo. I use he, they pronouns, and yeah. <laughs> Hi, I'm Christina Jensen. I am a middle school counselor here in Lander, Wyoming. My name is Nate Shoutis, and I am the library media specialist at Lander Valley High School. I'm Jenny Young. I am a special education teacher at Lander Middle School. Hi, I'm Willow Wells. I'm a junior at Lander Valley High School, and I use all pronouns. Every year is a little bit different, but in general, our LGBTQ kids do not feel safe in schools. Um, last year was a particularly violent year towards this demographic. Um, it, it was um, incredible, some of the things that were reported and were not followed up on, and uh, I think in general, um, the students are correct to not feel safe in schools it's not a safe environment for them. This was last year, there were, there was a kid in particular who was making threats against LGBT students. I've had slurs yelled at me from cars. Um, like there's just been a lot of like bad feelings directed towards me. And so honestly, at school, I don't feel very safe. Uh, my daughter's included in that group as somebody who doesn't feel safe at school, um, or she didn't. And I know last year there was some kids who didn't feel safe. And it's because, like, middle school is so hard. Like, it's, you're a big ball of mush just trying to figure stuff out. And if you're different, you're gonna know very quickly that you're different, especially in a small town. When I'm out, like, walking to my car, I've gotten, like, barked at. I remember, like, just the other day, this guy drove past and, like, growled at me and I'm just like why I don't understand okay but yeah generally speaking like inside of the building yes but also no like it's there's kind of a difference between like that mental and physical safety you know cuz sometimes you can feel physically safe but you're being harassed <laughs> Like, in the parking lot, I don't think anything serious is gonna happen, but at the same time, like, what if, you know? And it's kind of just that what if that just hovers over you in your subconscious or whatever, and I think that's the main problem. But sometimes kids go for the jugular, and they know what words are gonna hurt the worst. And of course, like the, the hated F word that's in that community, like we don't say that, but people use it freely and people don't feel safe when that happens because they're specific, specifically using it to hurt someone or bring someone down. And that's when it becomes an issue in our school. If it hurts somebody and it's meant to bring someone down, then it definitely should be against the rules. And it definitely makes people feel unsafe because they feel targeted just by being who they are. And that's always unfair, and that should always be against the rules. But sometimes it goes unnoticed, and a lot of times it doesn't get reported. And I think that's where a lot of times kids feel invisible and not seen, is when that happens. So lots of things happened at the non-discrimination policy board meeting last May or April, I can't remember if it was May or April, but um, essentially the board voted to remove gender identity, sexual orientation, veteran status, um, and maybe one other protected class from the school district's non-discrimination policy. And it was really controversial uh, for a lot of reasons. The members who voted to remove it, some of them expressed that it was just a simple procedure to match the language of the district's policy with that of the state and said the state already has that 
you know, the state has this language, so we're just going to match this language to it. Uh, however, over 30 parents and teachers and community members and students showed up at the meeting and asked them to not remove that language, uh, saying that that language was really important to students' well-being and feeling welcome in the district. The room was entirely packed. There weren't just people in the chairs. There were people like along the edges, like taking up the entirety of the room. There were so many people there and they all wanted to talk. What they ended up deciding was that they didn't need to have all of those uh, marginalized classes and communities listed because in their mind it didn't take away any of the protections. I don't know, I just remember watching because it, it was live streamed through Zoom and I was at home in the living room with my parents and I remember like the second they voted like yeah we should take that out because like it's not that big of a deal and my heart just dropped and I was crying and like I remember like people were saying it doesn't have that big of an effect and like you know people will still get punished for bullying but I don't know it's just like there's a huge disconnect between that and it was just a really sad day and I had to go back to school and be like ah. Oh. <laughs> Uh, taking the wording out, the specific wording for those marginalized groups of people, it made them feel as though they are no longer protected. This one guy stood up and he started yelling um, because he, yeah, he kind of lost it. Um, I feel kind of bad for him, honestly, because he was talking about like his son who almost committed um, suicide last year due to discriminatory bullying. Um, but it really, really did matter um, to a lot of people. So it was a really destructive mood, move from the school board and was really, really damaging to the community. There's kind of a lack of understanding of what sexual discrimination is and that sexual discrimination includes sexual identity and it doesn't have to be like bullying. So bullying, part of that definition is it has to be repetitive in nature and malicious, like a malicious intent. And there has to be like that power discrepancy where it's somebody who has power over somebody who doesn't have power and it happens repeatedly. Discrimination is a group of people or like a category of peoples. So I think in general, there was harassment and discrimination before the policy was changed and I think there's harassment and discrimination after the policy was changed. I think there has just been, period, a lot of harassment and discrimination. How it gets lumped together, um, I think there is more awareness on the part of administrators now to treat them a little bit more as individual things happening and not as just bullying in general. But more specifically, this is gender-based harassment. So there's a clear difference between bullying and straight-up discrimination and homophobia and transphobia. And so I think a lot of instances of what queer kids have experienced at this school is homophobia and transphobia and blatant discrimination. There needs to be public recognition from our district leadership that um, our LGBTQ students are harassed and are living under a constant low-grade radiation of homophobia and, um, and, and just damaging and constant um, vocalized hostilities towards them. Um, I hear it, I hear it all the time. Almost not a day goes by when I don't hear some kind of um, slur, direct or indirect slur towards this group of people. Environmental factors could definitely, could definitely affect how our youth respond to different things, right? Just like every household has a different viewpoint and different like political beliefs and just different religious beliefs and culture, everyone has a different household, right? And so therefore, they see things differently. And kids our age in middle school, they're definitely trapped between what my parents believe and now I might believe something different. What do I do? Do I do what my parents want me to do? Do I do what I want to do? So religion like really shaped my early mindset and I remember specifically I have this little pink Bible. It was like the girl's Bible and it had like little like what should I do if my friend is blank? And it was like what should I do if my friend is smoking? 
What should I do if my friend is stealing? And I remember one, what should I do if my friend is gay? And it said, remember, being gay is a sin. We can love these people, but we cannot love that they are homosexual. And I remember that just changed everything for me. And personally, I kind of now um, identify as vaguely atheist. Like, I, I'm, I guess I'm like more agnostic than anything. But like that kind of opened my eyes because I realized that this religion does not care about me. Like I grew up like non non-denominational Christian. I realized that this religion does not care about me, and a lot of kid or a lot of people in this church do not care, and that they will not like hear me out. And so I guess like that can have a huge, terrible effect on kids, and I think it does. Like I know a lot of ex-religious -re LGBT kids that have like a lot of trauma from their upbringing, and it sucks. So we have started the process of having a um, GSA here at the middle school, which would be incredible because it would help bridge that gap for going into high school. Like here at LVHS, we have a speak club, and like that's an anti-bullying club, and I, I honestly think that that should be more widespread because that has helped a lot. Well, speak club is a club of... It's not just for people who are part of the LGBTQ plus community. It's mainly just like anti-bullying, anti-harassment, but a lot of it is LGBTQ plus stuff because that's a lot of what we need. Um, yeah, it's uh, it helps a lot with um, activism and we also focus a lot on mental health and it's just overall like a great safe space as well to talk about your experiences. It's incredible and has been a, a really huge force for them to make friends and to find some stability in the school and to have recourse if something is going badly in their lives. Um, so I think it's super important. I'm going to cry because every year I have several students who come and confide in me about the difficulties in their life and it's tr tragic and heartbreaking. And without a club like this, they wouldn't have anywhere to go. And I think it's testament to the, like, the bigotry that exists in this state and in this country that we need something like this. Um, it's, it is really, really hard for some students, particularly students who don't have supportive parents. Um, and so I think the, the club and its existence and the fact that it is protected by federal law and cannot be winked out of existence despite certain people trying is just super crucial to many students here. So I am obviously a strong believer in what the club does. Um, to push for change, people need to know that it's a really long, slow road and that there's an analogy that a woman I really respect named Sarah Burlingame from an organization called Wyoming Equality uses a lot and I really have used it myself and that's we're not flipping a switch, we're turning a dial. We're not going to see any kind of change overnight. Um, it's not going to get better for a long time. Um, so it, it's going to take a long sustained effort to slowly change the culture um, until everybody has equal rights in this country, which currently they don't. There should be support for all minorities and it has to do like with equity. It's like say a cishet person has like this box, but a like a trans person has like this box. You gotta get it to equal equity. You gotta get it up there. Um, I think district leadership needs to push back against bigotry in every way possible. And instead of reacting to it, they need to get in front of it and try and build a healthy culture in their schools because right now it's really an unhealthy culture. Um, people do not feel supported, do not feel welcome, and um, district's leaders need to recognize that these people feel afraid and feel harassed and are not getting their basic rights to a harassment-free education met at all. I think starting a GSA, research shows that it reduces the uh, amount of suicide ideation in those marginalized communities when there's at least just a GSA at the school. So that's a good place to start. I think shows a lot of support when adults just um, hear what they have to say, 
and just are there for them and know that they're just unconditionally loved by the adults around them. I think that makes the biggest difference of all. Honestly, I think if people were more willing to just listen, um, I think that would really help. And uh, mostly like, yeah, really just listening and I mean, not like threatening to out people or like you don't have to share that like you shouldn't share that if someone explicitly tells you not to as well yeah just listening mostly is all i'd say and then also like taking action trying to speak and get people to i don't know just yeah care they're not the majority and so as long as you're in the minority you're gonna need support and you're gonna need support from the majority um, I am a strong believer that representation is one of the most important things that especially queer youth can have because like growing up personally I never saw like a queer character or a trans character in any media I was consuming there is so many great like queer artists out there who write like comic books and graphic novels and just really fun stories that I've even like read a couple this year that I think would work perfect in our library that just follow the follow the life of someone in the LGBTQ plus community and even that just helps people feel seen and heard and they're like look there's people out here just like me I think the best way we can make people care is by telling our stories, telling these hard, awful stories that, I mean, a lot of people seem to have at least one of, you know. Um, I think maybe sending, I don't know, I'm trying to find like literally anything, but I think the best way to spread awareness it would be like to have someone speak on it or train the teachers in awareness and like all of that type of stuff. I think that would help at least with like the teachers themselves or just maybe for like all school employees just so people are aware that this stuff happens and just action steps to take afterwards would be helpful as well just for everybody to know. I think awareness is always needed, whether it be like articles to to read, books, literature, anything is always a plus. I think just being in education, we're always trying to gain knowledge, we're like forever learners. And so within a school, I always think like, yeah, the more literature, the better to just kind of learn. Learn more and be up on the topics and... I think in some circles, there just needs to be more awareness, but I also think that there's tons of awareness. Um, it's just that it's not going anywhere because we're so polarized and people are so fixed in their mindsets and are unwilling to open their eyes and look at the problem and recognize this is a huge problem. And as occurred around the school board meeting, there was a lot of awareness. There was a huge drive. Uh, students organized a protest and led a protest that was very public. And a lot of awareness was raised, and our administrations and leadership did nothing about it. Absolutely nothing. There was not even a reply from many of the people they were protesting against, um, which is kind of heartbreaking. I don't know if the people who bark and like call people slurs and all of that sort of stuff would just understand or hear one person's story, I feel like that would help just if they would if everybody could just see each other as human beings <laughs> that would be so helpful um, I'm leaving the school district and if I was not leaving this would be a very risky thing to say to somebody to accuse this our school board or our administrations of suppressing LGBTQ voices and thoughts and open dialogue in a free society um, but I but I am leaving and I don't care uh, my job's not on the line in the same way and so I think you're gonna find there's many teachers here who feel like they cannot speak up right now for fear of recrimination against their jobs and it has certainly affected me and is I'm not afraid to speak out anymore because I'm leaving already
Um, and, and yeah, I feel like it needs to be said. Just be kind because you never know what people are going through and you don't know like what led them to the situation they're in. Even if you don't think that they're valid or you don't think that they're whatever, just respect it because it does not affect you at all.